Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and get started with our lunch, and I'd like to welcome and thank everybody for coming out to our November Election Day Chamber Luncheon. Hope everybody's taking the time to vote. A uh, lot of opportunities to do that this year. We've got a great program for everybody. Uh, very excited to have our Commissioner of Agriculture, Dr. Ryan Quarles, with us today. Dr. Quarles is an old friend and uh, doing great things up in Frankfurt. We're excited to have him here with us. And uh, first and foremost, I'd like to ask Pastor Darvey Finnison from East Somerset Baptist Church to please come forward to bless today's meal. All right, let's get it down here. There we go. I'll hear about that later. Let's bow for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day that you've given us and the occasion that's brought us out. We thank you for all of your blessings in our life, most of all for Jesus. I pray that you'll bless the food for the nourishment of our bodies. I pray that you'll bless everything that happens here today. May it go well and be a, an encouragement and blessing to everyone. Lord, I pray for our nation as well as our community. Today we're voting. I, I pray for wisdom. I pray for guidance. I pray not only for today as people are engaged in the process, but the days that are to come that you'll each give us wisdom and grace as we deal with results and move on. Lord, we need you like we've never needed you before. So I pray for each one in this room that in the, with the challenges we face and the, with the tensions that we have to deal with, that you'll give us the ability to have grace and wisdom and be a blessing in our businesses, our homes, our churches, our community. And Lord, help us to be that difference that I know that you're working to make. So we thank you for your promise, your presence. We ask you to bless today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Finnison. Appreciate that. Uh, so a few announcements and things to talk about before we get into our program. First of all, I want to thank uh, David and Blake Morris and the whole team over at uh, Modern Systems for providing our fever detection units out in the hall today. Uh, we have said since July that we can have these luncheons in a safe and responsible way. And one of the ways to do that is to make sure that we have uh, technology like those fever detection systems and we make sure that we open this room up and we we do these types of events safely and responsibly and we're very proud of that and we want to thank Modern Systems for for being here this month and, and uh, helping us with that. I uh, also just want to go over a few uh, upcoming events with you. Uh, we have some uh, 2020 is there's a lot of anniversaries in our community so I guess everybody knows by now, Haney's Apple Farm, this is their 150th anniversary this year. I've asked you guys several times, yes. I've asked you guys several times to find me an older business. I don't think you can. I think they're the oldest business in our community. I think they have the oldest farm in our community. So want to wish them a happy 150th. Uh, we recently went out to uh, Paul's Discount. Had a great conversation with Joe Nykirk. This is their 60th anniversary this year at Paul's Discount. And uh, we're going to be going on the 25th. We're going to Anderson Office Supply. This is their 60th anniversary as well this year. So we're going to be doing one of our chamber spotlights. This is a virtual series we do. We'll actually go and, and we'll uh, do an interview. And these are great opportunities to archive some of this history. You know, I mean, it's an excellent opportunity. And we're excited to go do a spotlight with them. 60 years in business is a big deal. Uh, also, on the uh, 12th of this month, so next Thursday, the 25th anniversary of the Mole Hole. So the Mole Hole, uh, a beautiful little store in our downtown area. We're going to be doing an after hours there. Should be a lot of fun. At the, uh, They're going to have uh, food, drinks, and uh, if you know the owner, uh, Tammy, she's going to, she'll put on a good show for us. So that is next Thursday, November 12th. And again, November 25th, we've got a 60th anniversary spotlight with Anderson Office Supply. Uh, our next luncheon, we are excited to, uh, normally we would do our holiday auction, but it's going to be online this year. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Ford Brothers Auctioneers has been kind enough to do that uh, for us. It's going to be entirely uh, virtual, online, that holiday auction. We are shamelessly beg borrowing and stealing everything we can from uh, people like yourselves to, to donate to that. So if you haven't received a call, maybe you will receive one soon. Every dollar from our holiday auction 
goes to scholarships for local high school students who want to attend Somerset Community College. To date, we have raised over $122,000 from this initiative uh, for local high school students, and we're going to continue to do that. We think we're going to have a good year with that. And then on December 5th, the first Saturday in December, I think it's been the first Saturday in December since I was a kid, the Community Christmas Parade. We are going to be doing that. We're very excited to host that this year. The route is a mile and a half long, so there's lots of places for you to set up camp and socially distance and watch a really neat, fun parade. We're excited to do that. So lots of things going on in our community. We're excited to be a part of some of those. But again, we're here today to listen to uh, our Commissioner of Agriculture. And at this point, oh, one more thing before I, I turn the mic over. We have got a couple of uh, awesome, awesome uh, kids that are in our office right now. Uh, as our interns. Both are uh, governor scholars and I uh, want to recognize them. Jackson Owens, Allison Stamper, where are you all at? There they are. Give them a big round of applause. We only take the good ones, folks. They're awesome. We really enjoy having them. Uh, Jackson actually went through our Young Entrepreneurs Academy a couple years and came in second place. Is that right, Jack? Yes, sir. So want to want to thank them for coming out and helping us. They're doing an awesome job. So in saying that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this microphone over to my boss, president of the Chamber of Commerce this year, Mr. Troy Lovell. Well, again, I'd like to welcome everybody to our monthly chamber luncheon. I'm glad that you saw today is worthy of your time and just glad you made the effort to be here today. We appreciate it very much. I'd also like to welcome all of our guests, our public officials and their representatives, and all of our chamber members. We appreciate everybody being here today. I'd also like to take this time to recognize all of our sponsors. We have our world-class sponsors, our chairman circle sponsors, and our ambassador circle sponsors. They're, not, on, uh, they're on, uh, not only listed on the wall, but we also have placards placed on your tables. So if you could, just please take the time to look over those. And uh, again, we much appreciate the sponsors of the Somerset Pulaski County Chamber of Commerce. I'd also like to take this opportunity to say thank you and show our appreciation to the Center for Rural Development and Karen's Catering and Event Planning. I don't know about you guys, but this is officially my first Thanksgiving meal of the season. Many more to come, I'm sure, but it, it was very good, and we appreciate it. And at this time, I'm going to turn the mic over to Matt Ford, Vice President of the Chamber of Commerce, for our new member business introductions. Matt. Thank you, Troy. Uh, once again, we have a lot of new uh, members to our organization, and uh, it's great to have uh, a thriving community and a th thriving chamber. So if you're here, if you would, please stand and we'll recognize your business. BU Boutique, contact Ashton Dockery and Amy Porter. Right here. They don't think they were able to make it. Next up, I think I saw this uh, next new business is FRD PR and Marketing LLC, Fair Dobbs. Pro providing public relations and marketing expertise, Fair Dobbs with FRD PR and marketing services is uh, going to invigorate your brands and your unique business strate strategies, connections, and positive brand exposure. With over 10 years of uh, communications and public relation experience and business, business involvement, FRD PR, that's a whole lot to say, Farah, and marketing is an everyday middleman between you and your business and your branding goals. For branding assistance, redoing your brand, and so much more, contact Farah at 606-802-3360 or visit her website at frdbrand.com. Give her a big hand. Next up, we have Jenny M. Davenport with Thrive Product Consultation. I think they're over here. Good to have you all. Thrive is a health and wellness company. Uh, it's the only company in the world with a nutritional DFT wearable skin patch that helps with energy, weight loss, 
uh, appetite, sleep, and so much more. For all of your th thriving help, uh, contact the good people uh, to get your life back. For more information, contact Jenny at 606-271-4368. Let's give Jenny a big hand. Another new business is Lake Cumberland Deep Clean. Contact Jesse and Travis uh, Durham. Uh, yeah, go ahead and take a stand, yes. Uh, Lake, Cumberland, Lake Cumberland Deep Clean and Somerset's newest option for commercial and residential cleaning. Locally owned and operated employees are trained. Uh, with They have background checks, uh, drug tests, and ready to handle any cleaning service that you may need. As a small business owner, Jesse and Travis understand that you have many choices when it comes to finding the ideal cleaning service. Lake Cumberland Deep Clean is licensed and fully insured and ready to work for you today. Let Lake Cumberland Deep Clean handle the housework so you can focus on the more important things in your life and your business. Um, it, for free quotes, contact them at 606-875-0239. And don't forget, all chamber members get a 10% off of all services. So give them a big hand as well. The next new business is Lake Cumberland Resort 2, Diana Pullum. Yeah, right there's Diana. Uh, located in Burnside, Kentucky, Lake Cumberland Resort is located uh, atop one of the highest points in Kentucky. Their community offers homes, uh, building sites, and rentals, and just unbelievable mountain views of the Daniel National uh, Forest. L uh, Lake Cumberland Resort has many uh, rental units, uh, everything from one-bedroom suites to two, and two to four-bedroom cabins, three to five-bedroom cottages, and uh, a whole ho host of other uh, properties. All units are fully furnished and equipped with wireless internet cable TV. Uh, daily rates are based on the season, and you may be, uh, may be found on each unit's uh, rental page. For more information or to reserve your spot, Contact Diana at 606-561-5611. Or for more information, go to their website at lakecumberlandresort.com. Give her a hand as well. The next new business is the Sun uh, Lounge and Tanning Salon. Contact Samantha and James Helton. I don't think they were able to make it either. Uh, the last uh, new business for today is West Brown Photography. Is Wes here? All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, keep, keep bringing those new businesses to our communities. A lot of great things going on in our community, and appreciate your all support of the chamber. Thank you, Matt. Now it's time to move on and time for us to say thank you and tell you just how much we appreciate our chamber ambassadors. So if you're a chamber ambassador in presence today, please stand up so we can recognize you. Thank you all very much. Appreciate you very much. Now it's time for our ambassador of the month. Need a drum roll, but don't have one. But that's fine. Kristen Whitson from the Job Shop is our ambassador of the month. Great job, Kristen. Now it's time to recognize our corporate sponsors for today's luncheon. We'll have Pulaski County Farm Bureau and Prairie Farms Dairy. We have representing them today the general manager of Prairie Farms Dairy, Mike Chandler. And we also have Mark Haney, president of Kentucky Farm Bureau. And he is going to, I'm going to introduce Mark to, right now to come up and, uh, and he's going to say a few words on behalf of Pulaski County Farm Bureau and we'll be introducing our speaker for today. So, Mark. Thank you very much, and it is an honor to uh, be here today. And I want to say thank you to the Chamber 
I want to say thank you to Pulaski County Farm Bureau and, and Prairie Farms for spotlighting and showcasing agriculture. Uh, Pulaski County Farm Bureau serves in this county at a, at a very high level, and we're so extremely proud of the work they've done. And we've had a, we've had a longtime county president that's been uh, working here. Uh, Wes Hargis has been county president for a number of years, and uh, we now have a change, and we have a new county president, David Taylor. Congratulations, David. Uh, let's give him a round of applause for what he does. He will, uh, he will do a great job uh, leading uh, Farm Bureau in this, uh, in this county. On behalf of the Kentucky Farm Bureau, 120 counties strong, 460,000 plus family members that we have living in not just every county in Kentucky, but every community and taking a leadership role in that community. Ag people, agriculture being a, a truly a backbone of the economy in Kentucky, truly the backbone of the economy in the United States of America. And it's been recognized for centuries that uh, feeding our nation and feeding the world is, is a task that we've been given, we've signed up for, and we perform admirably. I couldn't be more proud of the farmers across Kentucky and our nation at back in April, late spring, when we saw shelves at the stores beginning to empty, we begin to see uh, disruption in the food supply, yet at the same time when when people were kind of locking down and going home, Kentucky farmers and American farmers went to the field and they planted and they fed the livestock and they, they milked the cows and uh, they kept the food rolling. And in a short time, food production was back uh, where it needed to be. And it, it couldn't have happened with a more dedicated group than, than the farmers and the agriculture folks in the state of Kentucky and our nation. I also want to tell you that we've had lots of um, commissioners of agriculture that have been really good, but we've never had one that's rising to the ranks of our current one, Commissioner Ryan Quarles. He is known well and with his peers uh, across the nation. He is the president of his uh, uh, lead, or his uh, association of commissioners of agriculture. He has an inside track with USDA, Secretary of Agriculture, Purdue, and I've seen it firsthand. I've been in the room when they've been talking. And uh, I'm telling you, he, he, he leads our state uh, in a wonderful way. We work with him every day in our office. Uh, we work with Commissioner Quarles and not a finer person uh, working and a, and a leader of Kentucky for a long time to come. Please make welcome Commissioner Ryan Quarles. Well, uh, good afternoon. My name is Ryan Quarles. I have the honor to serve uh, as your Commissioner of Agriculture for the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And I have some really good news for everybody here today. Only five and a half hours more of political campaign commercials. And then you get your mailbox back, you get your internet back. Uh, that's something that we can all celebrate in. And so I'm just honored to be here once again. Uh, Somerset Pulaski County Chamber of Commerce sets aside a dedicated day to say thank you to our farmers and our Kentucky Proud members. I know this year we couldn't have our booths and tables out but on behalf of Kentucky's almost 10,000 Kentucky Proud members, we want to say thank you for your commitment to local agriculture. And I want to say a special thanks to uh, President Mark Haney and Kentucky Farm Bureau as well. Uh, Mr. Haney is a very humble person, but uh, you, are, you are lucky to have somebody from your neck of the woods to not just lead Kentucky agriculture, but to again, have influence on the national level. He works with the national president, Zippy Duvall, serves on the National Executive Committee. 
And so I just want to say thank you. There's not a day goes by where the Kentucky Department of Agriculture and Kentucky Farm Bureau does not work hand in hand to do what's best for our farm community. So Mr. Haney, the Haney family, congrats on 150 years. You don't look a day over 60, so congratulations uh, on that. And uh, we just want to say thank you. Today's election day. Some call it selection day. And I know we have some candidates in the crowd today. And uh, regardless of who you vote for, uh, I always tend to be very thankful for the opportunity that we were blessed to be Americans. And you look at the vast course of human history, uh, what we're doing today, exercising our rights and freedoms and having a, the ability to have a voice is a very rare occurrence in, uh, in world history. And so if there's any candidates here today, uh, I don't care what party you're with or what office you're running for, thank you for having the courage to put your name on the ballot and I think they deserve a round of applause as well for doing what they're doing. You know, even a Kentucky agriculture got into the political action this year. If you get a chance, check out uh, the beef yard sign. And so uh, you don't only see vote for Jesus, vote for candidates. We have a vote for beef sign that's been put around Kentucky as well. And it's been a lot of fun. I'm glad to be back in Somerset. Uh, uh, it's like home for me. One of my uh, ancestors, Tunzel Quarles, was one of the pioneers here, helped, helped found the city, helped found the county. He started the first bank in 1825, Farmer's Bank, and he's buried uh, here in town at one of the old Baptist churches. You know, 2020, by far, is the most bizarre year of our lives. And just, just think about this. Just in the past few months, we've had murder hornets, We've had uh, a pandemic. We've uh, currently have dealt with Chinese seeds being sent unsolicited in the mail. There's a new natural disaster almost every week. And it reminds me of one of those late night infomercial uh, salespeople. You know, that he's, they're selling a pillow that never needs fluffed again. They're selling a knife set that never ever needs to be sharpened again. And the deal keeps getting better. You know, they double the amount of knives you get. The price is cut in half. And then, uh, without fail, the salesperson gets on usually about 11 o'clock at night and says, but wait, there is more. And that seems to sum up every single day in 2020. And we wake up, there's new news. You know, Sean Connery just passed away. Some of the great uh, country music heroes, uh, Johnny Prine, Joe Diffie, they've left us as well. And so every year, every day seems to be a bizarre moment in America right now. But one thing that I know that we're going to pull off without a hitch is Election Day. You know, we've, our nation's gone through a pandemic before. We've gone through a civil war. Our grandparents went through World War II, and never once did we cancel or delay an election. And we're going to continue to do that tonight. And speaking of a pandemic, it really showcased the strength of American agriculture, that our farmers and our agribusinesses were not just important but we are essential and necessary to our daily life. And if there's any farmers in the crowd today, they deserve a round of applause for keeping us fed during a global pandemic. You know, back in March, when we first got word that a significant amount of the economy was going to be shut down by the government, we fought. We fought to keep agriculture open for business because agriculture doesn't doesn't uh, align with arbitrary dates set by people in Frankfurt or Washington, D.C. So we were so proud that President Trump, through the Department of Homeland Security, and also the governor's office, that we got clear exemptions for our farmers. And let's face it, our farmers have been socially distancing for a long time out in the fields. You know, they're used to not being around a lot of other folks, but we, we fought to make sure that our agribusinesses, like southern states, our other input supply stores, etc., our farmers markets, our agritourism events like Haney's got to stay open for business, including our farmers markets, which was a real bright spot of 2020. We know sales are up and more Kentuckians than ever, including myself, are spending a little bit more time in the kitchen and they're choosing to buy local. And there's no better way to say thank you to a Kentucky farm family, the 76,000 farm families we have in Kentucky than to buy local and buy Kentucky Proud. And you all are doing it in a big way here in Somerset. Another thing that we did immediately was that as our school systems transitioned to learning at home, we were one of the first states to get an exemption from the United States Department of Agriculture so that we could legally hand out food to students and parents. 
so that they could take that food home and make sure they were able to have nourishment while they're learning at home. And then we quickly transitioned and got another exemption for summer feeding as well. There's a lot of rules and regulations here, but Kentucky led the nation with making sure that our school children, one in five of which are considered food insecure, have a lack of access to food, to make sure that they had safe, nutritious food uh, at home as well. Another thing we did was that as our, as our businesses stayed open and the government shut down other businesses, we had to invent the, role, the rules and guidance that you may see today when it comes to social distancing, PPE. We saw it particularly in our meatpacking plants in the Midwest. And so a lot of the social distancing and employment guidelines uh, that you see today were actually perfected in agriculture first. So we kind of laid the groundwork for that as well. And Mr. Haney touched upon something that, uh, that nobody in our lifetime, and perhaps not since World War II, we experienced as a culture, and that is, to, that is to walk into a grocery store and not see a fully stocked shelf. You know, when you, if you remember back in April, those kind of eerie feelings makes you a little nervous. These are pictures you might see in, in Soviet Russia. These are pictures you might associate with other developing countries. But it happened right here in America. There was never a shortage of food, but what we did have were stress points on the food production system. It's a really complicated process about how food gets off the family farm, gets processed, and gets to your doorstep. And so particularly some of our meat processing plants, you saw temporary shutdowns in the Midwest. And so I want to make sure people know that there never was a food shortage, that we are part of the safest, most abundant food supply system in the world. We don't just feed 300 plus million Americans, but we feed other countries as well. And that's a testament to the strength and resiliency that you'll consider, you'll continue to see in agriculture as well. And I'm going to talk upon some of the positive things in COVID here in a moment and highlight a couple of your local companies as well. But never a day passed where our farmers didn't skip a beat. Some of my employees, Department of Agriculture, made sure our livestock yard stayed open. We have almost 30 livestock yards in Kentucky. And when a lot of other workers were say, take a day at home, telecommute, get on Zoom, there are employees that work for me that have yet to miss a single day of work uh, keeping agriculture open for business. So if you ever see a blue truck with a state seal on the side of it, chances are it's one of ours. Be sure to just take a moment to say thank you to those individuals. Oftentimes they don't get the praise and credit that they deserve. But, uh, but they definitely kept us open as well. And Somerset, Pulaski County, is, has already always been a strong agriculture county. You have 1,704 farms. Uh, the average farm size is 133 acres. And you have 226,000 acres underneath uh, current production right now. We're a livestock-heavy county, but we have some major grain operators here as well. And you're home to some major food processors, including prairie farms, uh, which is supplying milk all across the state as well. You have $55 million worth of agriculture sales that originate from Pulaski County. And perhaps the best statistic of them all is that $7 million is put into the back pockets of our men and women who are farming every day right here in Pulaski County. So it is a major piece of the economic portfolio. Uh, and we do spend some days on the lake at some points. But it's a major piece of every local economy across Kentucky and all 120 counties as well. And perhaps one of the coolest stats that we pulled is that of the 120 counties, Pulaski County represents well over 1% of all agricultural production in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. It happens right here. And plus, we have a very small corporate agriculture presence here. 97% of all of our farms in Pulaski County are run and owned by families like yours and mine. And that's something that shows you the strength and the community aspects that Kentucky agriculture has as well. And so when we talk about ag, we're talking about family. And we take care of each other. And so as the government shut down businesses back in March and April, and they still have severe limitations, many of which I disagree with right now, particularly on our restaurants, that if they don't get relief, we're looking at one-third of all restaurants closing their doors for good. And so we've got to prevent that happening. But Kentucky agriculture, we've had a few tough years, particularly economically with, with uh, depressed grain prices. But the generosity of Kentucky agriculture has never been greater. We knew 
that with people losing their jobs, we knew that with people uh, may even have to take a furlough, that there'd be a greater need at our food banks. We knew that from the beginning. And Kentucky Agriculture stepped up, stepped up to the plate. Kentucky Farm Bureau, without hesitation, donated $500,000 to our food banks to help keep Kentuckians fed. So thank you very much for helping out and stepping up to the plate to help keep fellow Kentuckians fed. A half million dollars. Thank you so much. We also had donors. We also had donors retrofit school buses. School buses usually pick up and drop off students. But we were able to retrofit about a dozen of them across the state so that they picked up and dropped off food throughout the summer months. And they're going to continue to do that here in the fall as well. We had over 560,000 eggs donated free of charge to our food banks. We had 10,000 pounds of old folks country sausage, it's good, you know that sausage, donated to our food banks. 5,000 pounds of Kentucky Proud cheese, 48,000 hamburgers from our beef producers, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And so we tried to make uh, lemonade out of lemons, that if we're going to help feed Kentuckians, let's give them the dignity of having fresh, local, Kentucky Proud food. And so perhaps when we get going again, they start buying local as well. And there's one program that continues today through the strong support of the USDA and the strong support of Congressman Hal Rogers, who voted for the Farm Bill. $3 billion was set aside to buy up American agriculture goods. These are, these are fruits and vegetables and dairy products that otherwise could have ended up in the field, never harvested, would have ended up being dumped. And that $3 billion is being used to this day to help buy American and give it to those less fortunate. Over 100 million boxes have been set, have been given out to Americans, including a big chunk of which right here in Kentucky. And guess what product that's included in some of those, in those, in those boxes? Prairie Farms Milk. And we're so proud of what your company and the community of farmers, a farmer-owned co-op, have done to help those less fortunate. And Prairie Farms deserves a round of applause for helping those less fortunate. Thank you, Mike Chandler, for what you've done. I'm also really proud of the work not only Congressman Rogers and Leader McConnell and the rest of our delegation have done on the federal level to make sure that our farmers are taken care of, but also making sure our food banks have supplies. But right here in Kentucky, we're constantly changing our laws to make it a little bit easier to donate, maybe time, resources, apples, other commodities to our food banks. And, uh, and Senator Rick Girdler has always been there for us when it comes to making sure that we have legislation that really is leading in the nation with having the strongest food donation law in the country. So thank you for what you've done to help shepherd legislation through the halls of chambers, the halls of Frankfurt as well. Now, some bright spots of COVID-19. When everything else was shut down, when over 90 of our county fairs decided maybe it's not the best idea to have something this year, we made sure to petition the governor's office and work with our fair board so that Kentucky would not have an asterisk next to year 2020 when it came to having a Kentucky State Fair. We're so proud that when other states were shutting down their state fair, Kentucky decided to say, we're responsible enough to put public health first. Our ag community needs something to look forward to. And if you talk to any of the kids, if there are 4-H and FFA members that have spent a year of their life learning about that personal responsibility, learning about those leadership skills of showing animals. Uh, it's a hobby you just can't take off for a day. You gotta take, you're responsible for animals. Many of those kids did not have a single opportunity to show their livestock this year. But we made sure they had at least one chance at the Kentucky State Fair, and we pulled it off without a hitch. And because of the success of the State Fair, later this month, we're gonna have the largest purebred livestock show in the world hosted in Louisville, Kentucky. And so when other states said it was too complicated, they threw their hands up. Here in Kentucky, we said we can do it, and we did it due to agriculture's help as well. We also launched a very cool program, a retro program with our UK Cooperative Extension Service. We're for, so fortunate to have an extension office in every single county in Kentucky. And this year, we did something that our grandparents did in World War II. In World War II, half of all food that was consumed in America came off gardens, not family farms. It was backyard gardening. And uh, 
And many people had forgotten that. They'd forgotten about canings, a lost art. And so with our extension offices, we said, kids, if you're going to spend a little extra time at home, why not get your hands dirty? Learn about the science, technology, engineering, and math that's involved with agriculture today. And we started a victory garden program. And we actually had some retro posters that looked like World War II pro, uh, posters uh, sent out across the Commonwealth. And we're going to continue that program into the future as well. And speaking of the future, you know, they say that uh, necessity is the mother of all innovation. And this year, with some inflection points on our food production system, we decided to strengthen agriculture on the national level. We had a series of meetings across Kentucky linking Kentucky agriculture with our strong manufacturing base. You know, there's only one industry that employs more Kentuckians in agriculture in our state, and that's manufacturing. So we combined them together. So we had, a, we had a series of what we called land meetings where we connected our manufacturers and agriculture together. And here's the most, the, the easiest example of explaining why this is important is that a lot of farmers have some timber on their farm. We have 12 million acres of timber in Kentucky. And guess what? The bourbon industry continues to grow at double digit margins every single year. So we're not only selling them Kentucky corn, which is being liquefied into a drink, but we're selling them Kentucky wood as well. And so that's an example of how we're linking our natural resources with growing markets here in Kentucky as well. And we're going to continue this conversation about ag technology with Kentucky Farm Bureau and other stakeholders about how we can position Kentucky to be the silicon hauler of agriculture technology across the country. Because when you think about software and computer development, Silicon Valley comes to mind. When you think about healthcare development, Boston, Houston comes to mind. But why not Kentucky? We have the resources to be number one. And ag technology is something that's not new in our state. We've been doing it for years. Uh, No-till corn planting invented in Kentucky. A lot of the conservation practices that got us out of the Great Dust Bowl in the 1930s invented in Kentucky. The Ebola vaccine was invented using Kentucky tobacco plant in Owensboro. And they're using that same technology to provide uh, perhaps some successful treatment for COVID-19 using Kentucky tobacco plants. So here, we're going to use the fact that we have access to cheap energy, that we have a workforce that knows how to get up in the morning and get to work each day. We're going to use the fact that we have strong higher education uh, institutions across our state, many of which have ag components. And congratulations, Mayor Keck, on the announcement of a new uh, higher education institution here in Somerset. But why not Kentucky? We're within one day's drive of two-thirds of the population in the United States. We're within, we're within a two-hour flight of all continental states in America. And let's not forget our biggest trading partners in the world, Canada and Mexico, a $40 billion uh, uh, agriculture trade surplus with just those two countries. And why not let Kentucky Proud not just be a symbol that signifies to Kentuckians that you're supporting a local farmer or agribusinesses, but why not let it be synonymous with Kentucky racehorses or Kentucky bourbon or perhaps the most famous Kentuckian to ever live, Colonel Sanders, okay? Why not use that powerful brand and connect it to the rest of the nation? And that's something we're going to do today. We have uh, three large-scale greenhouses under production, two, uh, two of which are operational right now. Just this past week, uh, Kentucky won out against other states to have Kentucky Proud Fresh Salmon. That's right. We're going to have 10,000 pounds of, of Kentucky Proud, Kentucky Raised Salmon raised in Mayfield, Kentucky, uh, with a company based out of Illinois. And so we're already attracting them here. So why not bring those ag tech jobs right here to our state and be successful with it as well? It's also important that there's no better time to stress international trade than in year 2020. We have a new trade agreement with Japan, the, the world's third biggest economy, 120 plus million affluent consumers that are used to buying over $3 billion of pork and Kentucky beef as well. We have a new trade protocol with China. They're making some of the biggest purchases in our country's history uh, between the United States and China, particularly when it comes to corn and soybeans. And they bought their first load of American rice in the history of our country uh, just last week. And so we are making progress, but perhaps the most successful trade agreement in our nation's history went into effect on July 1st. It's called the USMCA, TMEC in Mexico, and Kuzma in Canada. 
and that's a nearly trade-free environment for Kentucky agriculture with Canada and Mexico as well. And on the national level, we're very proud. The unfortunate thing is that all the benefits from these trade agreements are being masked uh, and overshadowed by COVID-19. But we're going to push forward and make sure that our farmers in Kentucky that punch above their weight class, they're not just good at what they produce, they're great, have an avenue to market their goods outside of the United States where 96% of all consumers live outside the border of the United States. But look, despite all these lofty goals, there's no better way to say thank you or to support a Kentucky farmer than right here in Somerset. Visit your farmer's market. Look for that buy local section in your grocery store. Visit our 500 plus agritourism sites and our roadside markets Farm Bureau work with. That we can sit up here and talk about what's going on around the world and talk about trade agreements. But if you want to have a tangible, meaningful relationship with Kentucky agriculture, put your boots on, attend a Farm Bureau meeting, attend a cattleman's meeting, go, go to your soil conservation or extension, support your local 4-H and FFA chapters, and get to know the farm families, the men and women who provide the food and fiber year in and year out, the people who have the grit to not let a global pandemic cause them to slow down one bit, the folks that really are the definition of entrepreneurs and innovators, folks that put seeds out into the ground, say a prayer, and might, just might break even at the end of the year. They don't get paychecks every two, every two weeks. These are the men and women that really encompass what it means to be an American, that, that really espouse the traditions of liberty and freedom, the things that make us great, where only 1% of the population feeds the rest of our population, we're the envy of the world. And that's to say a sincere thank you. And not just say it, but, meaning, be, but be meaningful when you buy your products at the grocery store and just say a thank you to the Kentucky farmer. So if there's any Kentucky farmers or agribusiness folks in the crowd today, please stand up so we can give you the recognition that you deserve for a lifetime of achievement. So please stand up, Chandler, Haney. Rodney, come on now. Thank you for what you do. And I'm going to leave you with one challenge point. I, sp I spoke earlier intentionally about the stress points we had on meat production in America. We're the biggest beef cattle state east of the Mississippi. It's a billion dollars a year. But almost all of our beef is, uh, ends up in the Midwest to be finished off, fattened up, and processed and you don't know what's coming back. We're, poultry is our number one ag commodity, $1.3 billion a year. We have a growing sheep and goat population, and here on November 14, you're gonna see every Kentuckian with a gun out there harvesting deer as well. And so we are a livestock-oriented state, but the amount of animals that are actually processed without leaving Kentucky is actually quite small. We have just shy of 30 meat processors that are USDA inspected in our state. And because of COVID-19, a silver lining has been put on buying local. And so we're so proud that the Ag Development Board, which uses those precious tobacco settlement monies that are here because of farm families like yours and mine, we still grow tobacco on our farm. We set aside $1.5 million to incentivize our meat processors to say, hey, if there's a way to increase the amount of Kentucky animals that are being processed in our state, let's figure that out and give you an incentive. Right now, the current wait time, if you want to get an animal into a local processor, is anywhere between six months and well over a year. And other states have put money from the CARES Act funding that Congressman Rogers and our congressional delegation, so uh, Mr. McConnell, so, so thoughtfully gave our states. Kentucky got $1.7 billion dollars. And of that 1.5 we set aside, a million of it's already encumbered. And we know there's more processors on the way that want to have the opportunity to expand. And I'm so proud today that Summit Meet with Kyle Turpin was a recipient of that grant. And so right here in Somerset, you're seeing uh, your tobacco settlement dollars at work. And he's going to help expand his plant right here. But we're hoping for more. 
of that $1.7 billion that Kentucky got, we're asking Governor Bashir for just $2 million. For just $2 million. Tennessee gave their ag community $50 million for this. Arkansas gave their ag $5 million. Kansas, which has half the population of Kentucky, gave their ag economy $10 million. And so we're going to ask Governor Bashir to work in a bipartisan way to do what's best for a nonpartisan industry to put $2 million up to help this expansion of local meat production across Kentucky. So if you have an opportunity to chime in on that, please do, because this is the only asset we've made for CARES Act funding in Kentucky. With that, Bobby, glad to be here today. Happy to answer any questions you may have. But I'm going to leave you with just two thoughts. COVID-19 is a very serious issue, but I think it's okay for us to have events again. I think it's okay for Kentuckians to have common sense to get out among our ways and we can prevent government shutdown of businesses once again in the future. And it also provided a silver lining that Kentucky agriculture isn't just important, it's absolutely essential. And I know it's election day. If you haven't gone to vote yet, please vote. I know it may be hard to select a candidate, but it's easy to select Kentucky Proud. Thank you all so much. Glad to be here today. Again, thank you to Dr. Quarles for being here today. And if you would, please, let's give him one more round of applause. Our Kentucky Commissioner of Agriculture, Dr. Quarles. And uh, it just one point of privilege is something very important to me that I wanted to make mention of. And my wife's here today, and she'll tell you that same thing. But ice cream is very important to me. Prairie Farms has been kind enough to bring a cooler here, and we have ice cream. I don't know if many of you walked past that when you got your lunch, but please visit that before you leave. Have an ice cream. Make your day better. But we appreciate that, Mike. Appreciate it very much. Uh, also, at this time, we're going to be drawing for our prizes. First, we have 20% off of M&W printing. Ticket number 176-708-708. How about ticket number 176-706-706? One seven six seven eight seven, ticket seven eight seven. Somebody's got to have some printing needs. You're about to check your tickets. Ticket seven eight seven. Anybody? How about ticket one seven six seven three four. Seven three four. Here we go. There's the winner. Next, we have $20 off R&B dry cleaners. Ticket number 176732. 732 for $20 off R&B dry cleaners. 176789. Oh, we have a winner? We got a winner over here. Next, we've got two $25 gift cards. We'll do these one at a time from Buffalo Wings and Rings. 176788. Ticket 788. $25 gift card for Buffalo Wings and Rings. Got a winner in the back. Another $25 gift card for Buffalo Wings and Rings, 176790, ticket 790. 
There it is in the back. We didn't have near as much trouble giving away the gift cards for wings and rings. <laughs> Again, our uh, next luncheon will be Tuesday, December the 1st, again at noon. It'll be our holiday variety show with Flashback Theater. So everybody be, please be making plans to be here that day. And uh, one just thing, a moment of housekeeping. When you leave, if you'll please take your, your plates and all your trash with you and dispose of it in the waste cans. It would be much appreciated by us and the Center for Rural Development. So now it's time to be dismissed with our pledge to the flag. I've asked, I'm going to ask Sis, uh, Senator Rick Girdler if he'll lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance.